What is going on everybody and welcome back once again. My name is Jordan, also known as J Monster, and today I have a lore video for you on Durthu Oakheart, one of the last remaining Elder Tree men of the Forest of Athaloran, and the commander of our forces in our Wood Elf campaign. I hope you guys enjoy. Durthu Oakheart, one of the last living tree man elders, is the father of the union between the Azurai and the woods of Athaloran. Once a kindly and benevolent teacher of the elves of Avalorn in the days before the destruction of the polar warp gates and the first great chaos incursion, Durthu has been scarred by centuries of loss. This once valiant champion and mentor of the elves is now an avatar of destruction, trampling invader and innocent trespasser alike, should they be unlucky enough to cross his path. The story of Durthu begins with the story of Athel Lorin. In the far distant past, the trees of the magical woods of Lorin began to awake and think in ways that trees were never meant to. Durthu was among the first of these trees to gain sentience, and spent centuries afterwards tending and nurturing to the others, while the world outside remained blissfully unaware of the new power rising beneath the boughs of Athel Lorin. Before long, the forest was aware of itself and the blooded life that thrived within it, such as the insects and animals that lived in the woods. At the center of this great wood stood the mighty Inetri Eternos, as it is known among the Asrai, or Oak of Ages to outsiders the spiritual heart of Athaloran, from which sprouted the world roots, connecting all of the woods of the world to the forest of Athaloran. It is via these roots that Durthu was able to travel to Avalorn in Ulthuan, island home of the High Elves, and where the children of Aisha met the children of Athaloran for the very first time. Over time, Durthu grew fond of the folk of Avalorn and taught them much of what he knew. From him, the elves learned how to shape the trees to their will without harming branch or bough, and many other secrets besides that the forest spirits still keep to this day, but the elves have long since forgotten. When the polar warp gates collapsed, and the demons of chaos brought war to the entire world, and even to the borders of Avalorn, rather than abandoning them to their fate, Durthu rallied the forest spirits to stand with the high elves of the Everqueen Astariel, and hold back the demons that swarmed over the land like locusts, burning the woods and slaying the elves wherever they found them. Even together, however, the elves and the forest spirits were no match for the seemingly endless hordes of chaos, and hour by hour were driven deeper and deeper into their heartlands, until at last there was nowhere left to run. On the eve of the final battle, Astariel approached the great elder with a desperate request. She begged him to save her children Ivrain and Morelion and remove them far from the battle, because if the line of the Everqueen was completely severed, the elves of Ulthuan would soon fade forever. Durthu had seen firsthand how the elves and the forest spirits were stronger together than they ever could have been apart, and so reluctantly accepted. He warned the Everqueen, however, that there would be a price to pay, and that, someday, the forest of Athaloran would claim the lives of many elves for its own. Astariel reluctantly agreed, seeing no other choice to save her children and her people. As Durthu departed with the twins, the elven lines were broken by Inkari, a keeper of secrets favored by Slanesh the dark prince who thirsts for the souls of elven kind. Astariel kissed her children goodbye one last time and went, calmly, down to the battle to meet her fate. Durthu spirited the twins away to Athaloran using the hidden paths of the world roots, and brought them before his brothers, the elder treemen Adanhu and the fierce Coedil. The trio quarreled over the fate of the twins. Coedil was furious that the sanctity of the world roots had been defiled by the footsteps of blooded races, and demanded that Ivrain and Morelion be immediately slain. Initially, Adanhu agreed, but Durthu was able to convince his brother to spare the twins, provided that they be put under a magically induced slumber for the duration of their stay, and departed as soon as their homeland was safe again. Eventually, Kalidor Dragon Tamer would stem the flow of chaos into the world with the creation of the Great Vortex that siphoned away most of the chaotic energy flowing from the polar warp gates that allowed the demons to freely manifest anywhere in the world. With Ulthuan free of demons, Durthu returned the twins to the Gaian Vale, and though he wished to stay and rebuild Avalorn to its previous glory, he departed for the forest of Athaloran once more, to heal the wounds left in the wake of chaos, for Athaloran had also suffered grievously. Soon, at least in the reckoning of a forest spirit, Durthu's pact with Astaria would bear fruit. The War of the Beard, a bloody and exhausting conflict instigated by the machinations of the Dark Elves and the colossal arrogance of the High Elves, broke out between the Dawi of the Karaz Angkor and the Empire of Phoenix King Kalidor II. The 450-year conflict would see both empires severely weakened and the High Elves driven from their holdings on the mainland. 
The dwarves pursued the elves to the borders of Athaloran, knowing that the elves had a profound connection with nature, and set themselves to spitefully pillaging the forest. This was an insult that Durthu and the forest could not ignore. Despite the frigid conditions weakening the woodland spirits, and Durthu being the only tree men not slumbering at the time, he rallied the dryads to repel the invaders. However, in their weakened state, they were no match for the axes, armor, and stout resolve of the Dalwi, and the dryads were soon scattered or slain. Durthu himself was wounded nearly to death by the keen axes of the dwarves, his scars serving to this day as a bitter reminder of the callous and rapacious nature of mortals. Realizing that the forest could not beat the Dawi on their own, Durthu bade the woods draw back from the Dawi, leading them towards the borders of the nearby Elven. The Elven colonies on the border of Athalorn had long refused to take part in the War of the Beard, not wanting to be used as cannon fodder in the politics of a faraway ruler to whom they felt little loyalty. Regardless, thinking that the Day of Reckoning was at hand and the Dawi had come to exact revenge for the offenses of the throne of Ulthuan, they rallied against the dwarves, filling the sky with volleys of arrows. Just as Athel Lorin had led the dwarves to the doorstep of the colonists, so too did it thwart every charge the dwarves mounted against the elven lines. Companies of archers would pepper the dwarven shield wall and vanish, only to re-emerge shortly after, impossible distances away. The dwarves were routed, and the few remaining survivors fled back to their holds. Fearing dwarven reprisals in the wake of such a stinging defeat, the colonists moved their dwellings inside of Athaloran itself. Strangely, unlike previous colonization attempts, the woods did not resist them. The elder treemen were again divided on what to do next. Coetel, of course, viewed the elves as interlopers and wanted to destroy them. Hadanhu, the eldest of the three, saw the potential of the elves to serve the forest. Durthu, however, remained silent. His encounters with the dwarves had changed him, and left him bitter and full of self-doubt. Eventually, Adonhu's will prevailed, and many secrets of the forest were opened up to the elves, though the treemen and dryads took careful measures not to reveal themselves. It would not be long before the dwarves returned with a massive force to avenge their previous defeat. The elves called a council to debate how best to deal with a dwarven throng, tens of thousands strong, on their very doorstep. And it was during this council that Adon who revealed himself and the existence of the forest spirits to the Azrai, promising them the forest's aid in the coming battle. This council also marked the first appearance of Orion, the living avatar of Kernis, elven god of the hunt, and Ariel, the immortal mage queen of the wood elves, who together would rule over the kingdoms of the Azrai as lord and lady. In the battle that followed, Durthu Oakhart led the charge against the dwarven lines exacting bloody revenge against the race that had so horribly scarred him. The dwarves broke, leaving thousands dead behind them on the mountainside, as they fell back to the safety of their holds once more. And thus, the bargain between Durthu and Astariel fulfilled, and the fate of the elves and the forest of Athaloran intertwined forever.